<laughs> oh, I'm happy today. It is finally over. Tottenham are losing their best ever player. Arguably. The greatest striker of all time to win nothing. Potentially. He's going to buy it. We can all celebrate. Arsenal fans, it's over. No more Harry Kane penalties and worldies. Oh, just taking a moment to really enjoy this moment. I mean, technically, it's not officially done yet, but if he doesn't go to Bayern, he's just... Okay, first of all, I'm, I'm going to make the argument that staying at Tottenham could potentially be a good thing for Harry Kane. I'm going to try and make that argument. The English top scorer record, he's very close to beating Alan Shearer. He will do it if he stays at Tottenham. He will earn more money by staying at Tottenham. He's going to get a higher wage and I'm sure his contract is worth a lot more in general with bonuses and whatever. It makes sense financially. His family probably don't really want to go to Germany. Maybe they do, but I could imagine they're feeling pretty settled. He's got a young family, I believe, and he would be staying at his home club, <laughs> quote unquote home club, there is a picture of Harry Kane in an Arsenal shirt when he was a kid. But hey, look, he's a Tottenham boy. He's one of their own. So I could also understand why some people would make the argument that staying isn't necessarily a bad thing. But the thing is, right, if you're a footballer at that level and look, finishing eighth in the Premier League, despite scoring 30 goals and getting three, only three assists. Really? Did he only get three? Oh, well, either way, 30 goals and they still only finished eighth. I mean, just think about where Tottenham are going to be without him. So I, I kind of understand why he would almost feel obliged to stay. He seems like that kind of guy. He's done it for years now. There's been rumours of him leaving, God, for two, three seasons in a row now. Um, I, w I would kind of understand him staying. But the thing is, if you're, if you're that elite of a football player. Imagine getting to 40, 50, looking back on your career and knowing that you won nothing. That you achieved some incredible personal records, but as a player, you won zero trophies. For me, that wouldn't work. Obviously, Harry Kane is... I mean, that's his... It's his prerogative. If he wants to finish his career known as the best Premier League striker, the best scoring, highest goal scoring player of all time in the Premier League, but win nothing. Fair play to him. But I think he's making the right call. Orney has said that they have reached an agreement. Tottenham and Bayern have finally come to a, a deal that works for both parties and it was completely up to Harry Kane. He had permission to talk, go for medicals, whatever. And of course, the offer was still there for, for him to stay. The other argument I would make is that he could potentially just see out his contract. He's got 12 months remaining at Tottenham. He could potentially just finish his career at Tottenham one last year. He'll probably bang in another 30 goals, 25 goals, 20 maybe. It depends how Tottenham gets on this season with a new manager and new players and it's kind of it kind of feels like a bit of a reset at the club again and it won't work again but then get another move within the Premier League whether it's City maybe Haaland would move I doubt it or Manchester United man I really feel like he could have he could, he could have gone to Manchester United this summer I just don't think Daniel Levy would have allowed it to happen the chairman at Tottenham I think Harry Kane would have gone to Man United he would have got them into the top three, top two, easy. He would, he, he could have potentially got them right up there with City if he was there this season, I think, because uh, they're missing just a number nine, in my opinion. If, if, if Man United got Harry Kane, I'll just say it. I think they'd be up there as Premier League title contenders. I really do believe that. And he would then win trophies, potentially. I think, you know, Man United are definitely more likely to win a trophy than Tottenham. He would win plenty of uh, personal awards. He'd probably get the golden boot and all of that stuff. And he would achieve the record. He would he would score the most goals in the Premier League. And that way, um, he kind of gets the best of both worlds. But I think this, this Bayern move is quite enticing for him. Clearly it is. They've clearly offered a good package. They like, uh, they, they've explained the project, I guess. And he knows it's 
an absolute guarantee he's going to win major honours at Bayern. So fair play to Tottenham for just accepting it. I think it's the best thing that Tottenham could do as well. You know, some people would make the argument that it's worth investing in a huge contract and turning down a massive amount of money to keep him at the club and get them into the Champions League. Remember, getting Champions League football for Premier League clubs is huge. You get so much money and you get the pull. You get you get the chance to present your club to new players and say, look, we're in the Champions League. Come, come play with us and play against the best players. But the reality is Harry Kane had arguably his best goal-scoring season last year and Tottenham still only finished eighth. So you can't really make that argument. There's no reason for him to stay, take more money and Tottenham give up on 120 million, including add-ons, just to get Champions League football, which I, I get would have been a huge thing for them. But I think realistically, they know he's he's not enough on his own. So the best thing Tottenham can do right now is accept the most money they can get for a 30-year-old footballer that's probably got three, four, maybe five seasons left in him at a push at the very top level and let him go on to fulfill his career. He deserves it. He's such a good player. I've always been massively jealous of Harry Kane being at Tottenham. Um, part of me is kind of sad that he won't stay in the Premier League, even with a different team and, and, and get that top scorer record because I, I think he deserves it I really do but hey it's not going to happen and Tottenham are going to be honestly they're going to struggle to hit eighth next season or it's this season the Premier League starts up again tonight right it's unbelievable we're here but Harry Kane will be, will be playing in the Bundesliga next season and um, I'm very happy about that because I won't have to see him grinning on the Emirates pitch after scoring Okay, let's move on to the next story, Caicedo. I mean, this is this is one of the craziest sagas in a while. You've got a player that I think is overvalued for sure. There is no way that Liverpool paying a hundred and eleven million pounds for Caicedo is value for money. It might be in the long run, but Right now, that kind of money gets you obscene quality. You could make the comparison to Declan Rice, I guess. The only thing I'd say is you do have that English tax and you've got a player that's older, a captain, more experience. It, it kind of made sense that Declan Rice had that bumper price. He was overpriced as well, in my opinion. But 111 million Liverpool have bid for, for Caicedo, who cost them five million two years ago. It's just a ridiculous amount of profit, isn't it? But I'm hearing that right now, he is in London. He's been asked to travel up to Liverpool to do his medical. And it's it's very possible that he's not going to go because he's having second thoughts. And that would obviously mean that someone, <clears throat> Chelsea, have asked him just to hang on a bit. Now, the reason I really want to talk about this, and it, it's relating to my club, Arsenal. It's very clear that if a player, if he's linked to Arsenal and Arsenal wants him, if there is any shred of doubt, any kind of second thoughts, the deal's done. If the player doesn't want Arsenal 100% fully focused, tunnel vision on, on our club, it seems like it just gets thrown out. And this would really concern me if I was a Liverpool fan or, you know, Jurgen Klopp. I mean, you can see here, I got told I can confirm the deal is agreed. Can't tell you, I don't know if it's actually going to happen or not. I would be really worried about this because if Caicedo doesn't actually want the Liverpool move, he wants a Chelsea move or maybe another club, who knows. But if he wants the Chelsea move more and he's simply going to Liverpool just because Brighton accepted a higher bid and he had no no other other route to take. He doesn't want to be at Brighton. He's not going to the club because he wants to be there. He would probably accept it. It's still great. It's Liverpool, one of the biggest clubs in the world. But if he's dead certain on going to Chelsea, that would suck. And, and honestly, if this is true, if Caicedo is literally saying to Liverpool, hang on, I'm not coming up yet. I'm still waiting for Chelsea. That would be an instant, right, well, we don't want to spend £111 million on you then, do we? We want you to want to come. 
So who knows what the truth is at this point, but I know that that would really worry me. It would really worry me because you want players at your club that want to be there. And I can't understand why he wouldn't want to go to Liverpool. It's a dream move. I wouldn't want to go to Chelsea right now, but I think there's a very clear and obvious reason why Caicedo wants Chelsea. They will offer a higher wage, and we already know that Caicedo really wants the biggest money he can get. He was very clear about that with with Brighton uh, when Arsenal bid, saying that he wants to do well for his family financially. And of course, I get that. And, And Chelsea will always be able to offer a higher wage. Maybe... He's quite settled down in London, Brighton. Obviously, if you if you don't know Brighton and London, it's it's like an hour max drive. So he could quite comfortably stay where he is, or he'd only have to move a little bit up towards Chelsea's training ground, Cobham, where, wherever. It wouldn't be that much of an uproot uh, for his large family, I've heard. So I think it, it it just it doesn't sit with me that potentially he'd be not going to Liverpool, even though they're showing so much faith in him and blowing the transfer record out of the water. I I wouldn't want that to happen. And one other thing I want to say about Liverpool, I don't understand what's gone on here. And this is hilarious, by the way, people misspelling his name. There's two different Caicedos trending on Twitter. Um, why didn't Liverpool stump up the cash for Bellingham? Bellingham has gone to Real Madrid for a very similar fee, roughly the same kind of fee. And it wasn't that long ago Klopp was saying, we can't compete. It wasn't long ago when he was saying, £100 million for a player? No, I'll be out of the job if that happens. And look what's happened. He's he's bidding £111 on a midfielder that's relatively unproven in a way. Let's face it, he's not exactly 26 in his prime, tons of experience. He could very well have a poor few seasons at Liverpool and be worth nothing, be worth 20 million in a couple of seasons. It is still a risky transfer. So why didn't they go for Bellingham? The only reason I can think of is that Bellingham simply just said, I don't really want to come to Liverpool. I'm sorry. Madrid wanted him for a while, I heard. So there's obviously two sides to every story. And it might have been that Liverpool were willing to go 90, 100, but Bellingham just said no. So they didn't bother. But going this far for Caicedo, it, it, it's a bit, I don't want to say it's a panic buy, but it, it's a little bit, it's a bit much, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's a lot. I, I just truly don't believe Caicedo is quite worth that money. I could argue that 70, 80 maybe, you're putting a, a punt on him because he does look like such a good raw talent. It's a lot of money. But we have to wait and see, guys. I don't know what's officially going to happen. I just had to talk about this. I know you guys can enjoy these videos where it's just me rambling a little bit. I'm sure we're going to find out exactly what's going to happen because Brighton are done with this. They do not want this to continue. He will go to the highest bidder. And I think Chelsea will be offering £112 in the next few hours.